First of all, just a quick ad for ways you can support the channel. I have a merchandise shop and I now have mini dog t-shirts for both of the designs. Also bags, stickers and mugs. And of course all those old designs like Open Dog and Performance Robots. I also have Patreon and YouTube channel membership. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and previews of what's coming up and various things. So if you'd like to support me there, that really makes all the difference to the projects. I love building walking robots, and I'm in the middle of some robot dog development, including Mini Dog, which walks dynamically, balancing on two legs at a time. And I'm about to start a larger robot dog that uses brushless back drivable gearboxes, which work like some of my previous test dogs. So we can try and make something bigger with compliant joints that can be more dynamic. During the development of Mini Dog, I tested trying to make it balance like a two wheel balancing robot. So as it falls in either direction, it goes faster in an attempt to pick itself up. But in the end, I used some other hacks to make Mini Dog balance on two legs at a time, and you can check those out in the series. All of that development is there. But I still want to investigate the idea of using variable velocity to make a walking robot dynamic, actively balancing to stop itself falling over. So today, we're going to build a really simple walking robot to try and further investigate that idea and see if it works at all. So you may have seen robots built by Theo Janssen, his Strand Beast robots. These robots have a clever four bar link mechanism, normally driven by a rotary mechanism, which makes the legs move in a walking motion. There's lots of videos out there about how they work, so I'll post some of those links in the description of the video below. There's a great video where Adam Savage actually goes to meet Theo Janssen, and also another video where Adam builds a pedal powered Strand Beast. So I'm going to try and use a very similar mechanism to see if we can make a legged robot dynamically balanced like a two wheel balancing robot. So instead of having two rows of legs like the normal strand beast would have, I'm going to use a single row of legs and then try and drive it dynamically with an inertial measurement unit so that we can see if we can actually get it to stand on that single row of legs like a two wheel balancing robot would stand on its single row of wheels. I've no idea if this is going to work, but before we find out, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor. That's right, it's Raid Shadow Legends. I've been playing Raid Shadow Legends for a week or so. It's a pretty good strategy game, so I'm going to tell you some more about it. Raid Shadow Legends is a turn-based role-playing game. That means it's similar to some board games with many more options to equip and strategize your champions. I think that makes it much better than some other battling games. It's available for PC, but you can also play on both your Android or iPhone. It's really good as a mobile game with lots of awesome detail and it's free to play now. This is the home screen where you can navigate the game. If you select champions, you can see your current team members. You can equip them here and view their ranks. The tavern is where you can upgrade your champions ranks and levels and you can also sacrifice some champions to increase the power of others. In the dungeons battle locations, you can fight against 10 different bosses and gain new artifacts to equip and make your champions stronger and better. And now the daily rewards program for new players has increased from 90 to 180 days. Each day you can claim your free rewards, which include energy refills, silver gems and shards, and a free legendary champion, Sile of the Drakes. Check out the links in the description. If you use the special link in your new player, you'll get 200,000 silver and one free champion, Grinner. This champion will really help you progress through the game when you start playing. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, but the rewards will only be available for the next 30 days. So I've sorted out the geometry for one leg here and we can see that mechanism. We get that satisfying walking motion, just like the proper strand beast. And we can see it goes in a pretty wiggly line, that foot along the ground, but it does pick up enough and come back down and go along. So that should work just fine. I've done this design in 3D, so all of my pivots and levers all overlap each other, and that wheel's got clearance to turn. The next design, of course, is just two of those cascaded, and they're 180 degrees out of sync. So now if we drive one of these, we should see we get two legs which walk along. But of course, we need a row of four of those so it doesn't fall over sideways, and that's going to make up our single row of legs. But of course a normal strand beast would normally have two rows of legs and two mechanisms opposing each other so that it's nice and stable and it doesn't fall over. But that's a bit boring for us so we're going to use just the one row of legs and try and make it actively balance. And moving on from that I've sorted out quite a bit of the mechanics here so that this thing can be 3D printed. Now you'll notice I've got a separate row of gears here which are all going to be driven by another motor with another reduction and those are driving the big gears which are driving the legs. And this is crucially needed because we've got these 
levers here, which would otherwise cut through an axle. If we had one axle going through all the red gears, then it would get cut by these levers, which are actually driving the legs. So we need to drive with an off-center axle that's well out of the way, and that will be driven by the motor. Here are some of the initial parts and some of these are printed on the Lolsbon Moore Struder with its 1.2mm nozzle so they should be really tough and they also didn't take very long to print. And as you can see here I've installed 6mm bolts with lock nuts and those are done up tight onto the 3D print so that holds the joint really rigid. So there's one leg together, that seems to work okay. I've put silicon grease on all of the bolts so it doesn't squeak. It is metal on plastic with studding which is a bit nasty but it seems to run okay really so I think that's going to be alright. Some parts, however, do have bearings like the main drive gear. So this has an 8mm bearing, internal diameter in each side, just like a skateboard wheel, and this recessed bolt, which makes the pivot point. Then in the middle, I've got a little 8mm bolt with a tiny head that I've ground down, and that goes into the main assembly, of course. Now there's a captive nut here to screw that bolt into, and once that's assembled, we've got two nuts on the back done up against each other, as well as on the captive nut, so that holds that in there nice and tight. And that should make our complete strand beast motion for one leg. So here are our four leg assemblies, which are all identical, and now we need a frame to mount them on. And that looks just like it does in the CAD, so we've got some 2020 extrusion to mount each leg assembly and one rail along the back. Now I've got some 3D printed more Struder prints again, which hold that pretty rigid, and of course that's all attached together with drop-in T-nuts and M4 socket cap bolts. And I left two 4mm bolt holes on each of these, so we can attach each leg to those fingers. So all of those are attached to the frame now, which should be pretty rigid, and now we need to put a drive shaft on to turn all of these gears. Now what I might do is separate the two halves, and that'll allow us to run one set of legs forward and one backwards, or one slightly faster, and hopefully we should be able to steer. So we're going to have a small gear binding on that big gear, and that's going to be on a square axle made of 2020 extrusion, because that makes it really easy to key. Of course a square axle won't rotate though, unless it's in something round, so we've basically got a bearing in a round pillow block and then the 2020 is attached to this square piece with a round profile that fits on the inside of the bearing and that'll be attached with T-nuts. So we're going to do that twice on each side and you'll notice what I've done is put these at the posing ways round so the whole thing doesn't slip out so one is pushing the bearing in from right to left and the other one from left to right and that's the same on both sides of the machine. Then we've got two drive shafts we're going to drive from separate motors probably with another pulley and belt reduction. So here's one of my 3D printed pillow blocks. We've got a thin wall bearing that should fit just in there. And then we've got this piece, which has got a internal diameter that matches that. And of course it's got that square hole to match some 2020 extrusion. And of course my smaller gears fit on that 2020 as well. And we've got space there to put in the bolts to hold it onto the T-slot. So I've installed those so the gears mesh with the big gears. And of course I can pull this one out so that we can align these to get these 180 degrees out of phase with each other and then just put the T-nuts in to put that in place. And of course we could change how that is quite easily just by sliding this gear off. We can also adjust how well the teeth mesh by adjusting these bolts. And of course this is all on T-slot so these two gears can get closer or further away from the red gears 
And of course these fingers are on T-slot so we can adjust each one independently as well. And as I mentioned before, these stoppers, which are basically holding this 2020 in place, one is facing this way, pushing the bearing into this block, one is facing this way, pushing the bearing into this block. And that means that this shaft, even if I pull this gear out, is fixed in the middle and it won't just fall off in one direction. So I just put that down on the carpet because the feet have smoothed and didn't really grip on the table just to see if that feels okay. It feels like it's probably going to walk. I don't know how well it's going to balance. There are a few issues I've noticed already, which are the legs are quite wobbly sideways. So I'll have to see how that works out, but I think up and down they should be strong enough to kind of support the mass of the robot. There's only really the battery and some electronics to go on top. The next thing we need to do is somehow drive these drive shafts, and I really want to make sure that I'm bracing them so they're not pulled against these fingers sticking out and there's any flex. We do have quite a rigid frame, but there's still going to be some flex on each leg. So basically I'm going to build an additional piece which braces across the main frame on the back with the ends of the fingers here so that we can get quite a good tension on the belt drive from motors that's going to drive each side of the robot. And that looks like a stick attached to each of those fingers at the front with one big rail that goes across the top and then a brace in the middle which takes that to the rail at the back and that means we can mount the motors in the middle and we can get a nice good tension on the drive shafts which are of course attached to the fingers as well with these bearings and we can get some tension on there without them skipping or slipping. If we were just to mount the motors on the back then these fingers would flex if the motors were mounted on this rail and then we might run into difficulty and that just seems a much more solid assembly. And here it is, so now we've got these four stilts attached to the ends of the fingers and we've got this rail along the front and the brace to the rail on the back and that gives us a place to mount the motors so we can get tension onto the drive shafts. So I've printed these which have got T5 pulleys on and nice square profiles for those axles so those will fit on each side and that will give us differential drive. I've also installed this stick to hold electronics and things and we're going to put some mass on top of there to make it easier to balance. We're probably going to need to offset the mass so it's right out here to keep the centre of gravity over the legs. Of course we've got this massive offset at the moment with the gears on and the motors have to sit over there as well. But at the moment now I can hold it, it seems kind of okay actually. I think you know it might actually work okay. I think at worst we might need another set of legs on the side and set those 120 degrees out of phase instead of 180 so we've got more legs on the ground. But actually that doesn't feel too bad if I just operate it manually. And of course what I'm trying to do here is test whether a walking robot with legs will balance in the same way as a two-wheel balancing robot. I've had limited success getting this method to work with four-legged robot dogs, although the agility of the actual robot has been limited so far until I build Open Dog version 2, which is coming up. In the end I just set the speed it walks to a fixed rate and just try to keep the centre of gravity over the feet as it moves by translating backwards and forwards dynamically in relation to the IMU data and that seemed to work out okay. But I suspect that treating the robot like a two-wheel balancing robot could be useful for bipedal robots because they're much taller with their legs at the bottom. In reality we probably need several methods of stability for a truly dynamic walking robot but it makes sense to try and specify the angle the robot leans to as it walks and have it catch itself as it falls just like a human. I've built several walking robots in the past, the most successful ones were the Star Wars Gonk Droid and Robot X. I found it wasn't too hard to make them walk on the spot just using IMU data to regulate the step speed and the joint angles but getting them to walk forward was much harder. But will it work? Well you have to wait till next time to find out because there's a significant amount more work to do including mounting those motors, getting some electronics and inertial measurement unit, a remote control potentially, getting that mass so it's offset correctly so that the balancing point is right on the legs where they clear the ground correctly and a number of other things. So I'm going to come back for a part two on that. Don't forget you can support me on Patreon and for a YouTube channel membership and also through my merchandise store including mini dog t-shirts. Alright that's all for now.